It's easy on the left, as the old saying goes. Left-handers do get quite a bit of abuse, it has to be said, although perhaps they're receiving less these days, as most haters have directed their energy towards two-handed bowlers. But even so, I think we should give lefties a little bit of love, which is why today we're going to look at the best left-handers of all time and reveal who the greatest lefty really is. There are five left-handers on this list, and we will rank them accordingly. So let's begin. Now, just before we start with number five, I'd like to start with a special mention to Billy Oatman. As I'm sure many of you heard the tragic news that Billy recently passed away. Now, Billy was a left-hander himself, and he was the first black player to win the PBA Rookie of the Year in the 2006 and 2007 season. I have to say, I don't know too much about Billy, having never met him, but reading some of the tributes that came in shortly after his passing, and it seemed clear that he had a real love and passion for the game and that he was an incredibly kind and warm person. Now, judging by the shock and grief that so many bowlers have shown, it goes without saying he will be a huge loss to the bowling community. And that's why I just wanted to give him a special mention in this video. So starting with number five, Jason Couch. Jason Couch had an excellent career picking up 16 PBA titles, including four majors. Couch joined the PBA in 1991 and in his first full season in 92, he won the PBA Rookie of the Year and his first title came in the following year at the Turns Classic where he defeated legend Brian Voss. In the same year, he won his first major title at the 93 Touring Players Championship. Couch also managed to win back-to-back -back titles in events, which is a pretty rare occurrence for any PBA bowler. The 14th and 15th titles for him came in back-to-back -back events in 2007 and then he had a four-year drought where he won his 16th and final PBA Tour title at the 2011 Mark Roth Plastic Ball Championship. However, I think Couch is most famous for his Tournament of Champions 3 Pete, where he won this major event three times in a row, the only player ever to do so. Couch earned over $1.7 million over his PBA career, and in the end he had season-ending knee surgery in 2007 and although he did eventually bounce back from this winning another title in 2011 clearly this uh, knee injury had a, a pretty big impact on Jason's career from that point on and finally in 2012 he actually announced his retirement from full-time competitive bowling on the PBA Tour however we've still seen quite a bit of Jason on TV as he's been a manager for a number of years now as a part of the PBA League. But overall, Jason was an incredible bowler and I think definitely one of the best left-handers of all time. And I think the three-peat at the Tournament of Champions just really pushed him up so that he earned a spot on this list. Number four, Johnny Batraglia. Johnny joined the PBA in 1965 and he won his first title in 96 when he was just 19 years of age. And actually a week after this, he left the PBA to go and join the US Army during the Vietnam War. Good morning, Vietnam! But this absence from the PBA tour, well, it didn't really have too much of an impact on uh, his bowling ability as he quickly bounced back. And his best season as a pro actually came in 1971 when he won a total of five titles in that season. And it also included consecutive wins in the last three tournaments of the season and actually Petraglia remains the only PBA bowler to ever win three consecutive televised tournaments. He would also go on to win two more majors, uh, the 1977 US Open and the 1980 National Championship, which earned him the PBA career triple crown. And to top it all off, he even managed to roll the PBA seventh televised 300 game against Walter Ray Williams Jr. This was in the semi-final match of the 94 National Championship. However, even though he managed to score a 300 on live TV, it did not win him the title as he went on to the title match and unfortunately lost. But at, at 47 years of age, it did make him the oldest player to score a 300 in a televised PBA Tour event. But looking back, it's clear that he had a fantastic career and he's always in the conversation for the best lefties of all time. Number three, Parker Bone the third. 
Now initially I wanted to put Parker a little bit higher on this list, but when you get to the top three, it starts to get very difficult. We all know what Parker can do and we all know what a fantastic career he's had, but to me what really earns his place on this list is just how dominant he was in his prime. Between 1997 and 2002, he won 18 PBA titles. This is an incredible period of dominance that's on the levels of Walter Ray, Earl Anthony, Pete Webber, etc. And his best season during this period came in 99 when he won five titles and earned PBA Player of the Year. And he also earned this award yet again in the 2001-2002 season. Parker's also managed to display extreme longevity. He managed to win his second major tournament at the age of 49 by winning the PBA World Championship in 2013 and won another major at the Players Championship in 2015 at 52 years of age. He's also fifth on the list of all-time PBA titles with 35. He eventually overtook Mark Roth when the 52-year-old Bone won his 35th PBA Tour title at the Cheetah Championship in December 2015. In the last few years, he's competed on the PBA 50 Tour and has so far won 10 PBA 50 titles. Number two, Mike Albee. Mike Albee joined the PBA Tour in 1978 and captured his first title and Rookie of the Year honors in 79. He also managed to win his first major in the same year and became the youngest player to ever win a PBA major. Now that record stood until 2016 when Anthony Simonson won the USBC Masters. In 1985, he became the youngest player in PBA history to reach 10 career PBA titles and he won a total of 18 titles in the 80s, 9 in the 90s and he also did win one more in 2001 which gave him a total of 29 PBA titles placing him in 8th of all time. The 2001 win made him the first bowler in history to win at least one PBA title in four different decades. But this feat has since been uh, equaled by Weber, Duke and Walter Ray Williams Jr. Albee also had two PBA Player of the Year awards given to him in 85 and 95. And he ended his career with eight major championships. Albee is well known for winning the Triple Crown but it's also one of the few bowlers to also win the Grand Slam and he was the first bowler in history to capture the Super Slam whereby he won all of the five majors. This achievement was not matched until Jason Belmonte managed to do so in 2020. And on top of this, Albi and Belmonte are the only two PBA players to have won the Masters at least three times. And if you need any more proof uh, that Albi deserves to be second on this list, he was also the first left-handed player to bowl a perfect game on TV. It was a very close call between Albee and Parker Bone for second place, but I felt that Albee's major record just gave him an edge and earned him the number two spot on this list. And finally, number one, Earl Anthony. The number one spot can only really go to one person, and that's Earl Anthony. He's actually considered by many to be the greatest of all time, regardless of the fact that he was left-handed. Only Walter Ray seems to be able to challenge Earl for the title of greatest of all time after he surpassed Earl's number of PBA titles. Earl's story is pretty remarkable and it gives us an idea of just how dominant and skilled he was. In 1963, he bowled three PBA summer tournaments just in order for him to have an idea of what it would take to be able to compete on the tour. He didn't cash in any of these events but he decided that he wanted to try and be able to go out onto the tour full time. So it's said that in order to prepare himself, he was practicing between 300 and 350 games a week, which is basically up to eight hours a day. And after six years of this intense practice, Anthony began his professional bowling career in 1970. Now he was 31 years of age by this point, so he was a pretty old rookie. And he managed to win his first PBA title in June of that year. And then from that point on, once he reached 1972, he just took off and pretty much dominated the 70s, winning absolutely everything. His career did go on into the 80s, where he won four major titles, which included three national championships and a ABC Masters title. And this 1984 Masters major win was his final 
a PBA victory and gave him a total of 43 PBA titles. Now, I'm sure at the time many thought that this was a record that probably would never be broken but one man managed to do it and that was Walter Ray Williams Jr. But I think even Walter himself feels that Earl is the undisputed greatest of all time and he actually said the following in an interview. I feel Earl's record is better than mine because it was more condensed. Earl bowled 14 years and 400 or so events. I've bowled well over 600 by now, maybe 700. When Earl Anthony retired, he didn't have anyone to push him. He probably would have kept going to 50 if that were the case. It's hard to say what would have happened then. And it's a very good point and it was, it's just what makes Earl Anthony's career so remarkable. He came onto the PBA at a quite a late age at 31 and just dominated in a 14 year period. And who knows if he had carried on into the sort of same age that Walter and other guys like Norm Duke had, then perhaps he could have been sitting on 50 titles, maybe even more, we never know. But at the end of the day, what he did was simply remarkable. And I think in the minds of many, he is certainly the greatest left-hander of all time and probably even the greatest bowler, period. So that brings us to an end of today's video. I hope you've all enjoyed watching and please do let me know in the comments section below who your favourite left-handed bowler is and do you agree with my picks for this list. Thank you very much for watching and as always if you have enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. Thank you bowling fans and see you all next time.